We have VR. Yes. In this case, the flow here going in this direction, right? So there will be VR. Do we have V theta? Do we have V theta? So back to this question, the fin like this, does it cause the velocity to go in our direction? No. So here in this problem, you still have VC only, right? But VC may not be a function of Z alone. In this case, simply because if you look into the same radius from the center, velocity at this point and velocity at that point are not the same anymore. So in this case, Vc will be function of what? Theta for sure, z for sure. Does it function of r? Is it function of r? Yes. Oh, is it function of z? No. So r theta. Okay. What about this one? We have VR, we have VZ. Do we have V theta? Does the liquid rotating? If everything is flowing in laminar flow? No, it will not go rotating. So therefore, there will be no V theta, just VR, VC. Is VR a function of what? Does VR change with respect to R? Yes, so it's function of R. Does it change with respect to Z? Can you see that? VR here and VR there are not the same, right? fluid around here flowing in z direction fluid around there flowing in r direction so r component at this level and that level should not be the same so therefore we are supposed to change with respect to z what about vz does it change with respect to r sure even though we do not have any fin it's changed with respect to r at this position, Vz is zero. At this, posi this position, Vz is not. So therefore, it will be a function of R for sure. Does it change with respect to Z? Yes. In this case, yes. Right here, there's a velocity in Z component. Right there is not. So Vz is changing with respect to Z. So all kind of, this kind of practice, you need to do it by yourself. You need to practice imagining the flow streams and determine velocity components and also determine whether it is a function of what variables. This is extremely important because if you miss this, all the equations that you derive are totally incorrect. Okay? Of course, in the examination, we will not have this kind of problem for you guys to derive because it is too complicated. It is mathematically intensive. However, we can have this kind of problem simply asking you whether VR is zero, whether VZ is zero. This is within the scope of our class, all right? So I suggest you guys to set up the problems by yourself and practice. Now let's go back to our equation here. If this term is zero and these two terms would have two pi as a common, I'm going to drop this two pi, then 
I can divide everything by delta R. So delta R here will be dropped. Instead, it will appear here. And delta R there will be dropped. Right? Then, taking limit, delta R approaching zero. This term can go over to the left, to the right hand side. And then, it will become differential. Mm. In fact, the equation should look exactly the same, except the sign of g. That will be reversed. Okay. In the last example, this would be plus. In this example, it will be reversed in minus. So we will do the same thing. Just extend this, multiply by L. Can I do that? Yes. Then I can add row G zero so that I can combine pressure at L with the term rho G and combine pressure at zero with term rho G zero. But this time, the modified pressure will be defined differently. In last examples, modified pressure is defined with pressure minus rho gi. In this example, it will be positive. It will be plus rho gi. But it doesn't matter because modified pressure has uh, almost has no physical meanings. It's just the sign change. The sign here simply because we have different direction of the gravity with respect to z axis. Okay. So if you combine these together, you have modified pressure as zero minus modified pressure as L divided by L multiplied by R. Then it can integrate. In our last example, once you have this equation, we can determine C1 by simply taking boundary condition. The boundary condition that we took would be at R equal to zero, tau Rz is not infinite. It's a finite number. So that this combination would always be zero at R equal to zero. And then this R becomes zero. So therefore C1 is zero. Now, for this particular problem, can we still do the same thing? No. We cannot. Why? Because I asked, right? <laughs> because I asked. If I did not ask, you say, just repeat the same thing. Once I ask, you stop and think, what would happen here. So, can you explain it scientifically? Why can, why can we do it? This is another thing that you must be very careful. In order to choose the proper boundary condition, you need to consider our system, okay? For this particular problem, we cannot take R equal to zero. Why? Simply because right now, what is our problem? I mean, what is our system? 
Our system is fluid. We take boundaries around fluid only. So our system is like a piece of donut here. There is no fluid in the center. So therefore, at r equal to zero, that's not our system. r equal to zero is outside our system boundary. So we cannot conclude or include it in our system. Okay? So therefore, our trick that we used last time are out. We cannot use it. So is there any other boundary condition that we can use in order to find C1? At this moment, no. Okay? So what can we do? If we, can, if we do not know C1, can we go on? Yes, you can. And hopefully you can find other boundary condition later on. Okay? So we will go on. We know that according to Newton's law, tau Rz equal to minus mu dVz by dr plus dVr by dz. Okay, this is Newton's law. The term Vr is zero. So there is Vz only. And for this part, since we have only Vz, and since Vz is function of R only, so we, can, we don't need to put partial differential anymore. So it becomes minus mu dVz by dr. Just plug it back in our initial equation. Minus R mu dVz by dr equal to the rest. Right? If you look into the textbook, if you read the textbook, and in textbook there's one way to solve this equation. And there's another way which is a little bit easier to understand. But anyway, I will follow the textbook. Okay? In the textbook, it will say that if you look into velocity profile, for sure. Here, velocity is zero. There is zero. Somewhere in between, velocity is not zero. So there must be inflection point so that the velocity would go at maximum and then return to zero. Okay? The point where the velocity is maximum, the slope dvz by dr is zero. Okay? But the position where the maximum velocity takes place may not be the half distance here. It may not. In the textbook, it would say that the maximum takes place at position lambda r, where lambda is le less than 1. Okay? And the distance from the center to this pipe is kr. So we know that at r equal to kr, velocity is zero. At r equal to r, capital R, velocity is also zero. So somewhere in between, there's supposed to be a position where velocity reach maximum. Let that, velo let that position to be lambda r. So lambda in this case is still unknown, okay? But we can use that for this particular equation. 